hopefully everyone's doing well. Um, I wanted to take some time and <clears throat> kind of just go over the last lecture for the for the semester and um, and touch on <clears throat> an, a topic that kind of touch that, that covers a lot of different uh, elements that we've discussed throughout the course of the semester, and that is <clears throat> looking at resilience. And uh, a couple different pieces to this, uh, we have kind of alluded to a, a resilience, and I think I've <clears throat> I've uh, kind of uh, discussed it a little bit in class. But I want to spend a little bit more time thinking about how our uh, our, our cities, uh, how our people, um, and how our communities resilient uh, in the face of of natural disasters. So, um, one I'll first, you know, kind of just think a little bit about the difference between preparedness and resilience. So, resilience uh, or preparedness kind of is how do you um, get ready, knowing that there might be a disaster coming. Uh, resilience kind of thinks about how do you respond following that disaster, um, and so kind of looking ahead and thinking about um, how do we better prepare ourselves for those future disasters and how do we get back up after them? Um, so really kind of the first question that I wanna talk to is, is how do we define resilience? And, uh, and you know, there's, there's probably you know, various ways of kind of thinking about this, but one of the most common in, in, um, in science and then also ecology, which really is, is where a, a resilience is often kind of looked at, um, is, is uh, um, the ability or the capacity to recover from difficulty, okay? Um, or the ability to bounce back from a disturbance. And obviously, you know, we know that our natural disasters are um, certainly a, desert, a disturbance to our communities, to individuals, uh, and, and to cities um, and, and countries. So um, how do we, again, how do we bounce back from those? Um, so what does, what does a resilient world look like? Well, a um, couple things here. Uh, one, we're looking at building diversity into our, our structures, whether that's social structures, that, whether that's um, our, our physical structures in terms of roads or in terms of dams or, or, or levees or, or whatever that, 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 um, that those structures might be. We want to build diversity, have, um, and, and there's, there's reasons for that. You want um, redundancy in the process. Um, so you want various ways to be able to handle uh, different uh, disasters or situations. <clears throat> Other ones are eco. We want to think about ecological variability. So that's the ability to embrace ecological change as a matter of life. Ecological change is going to occur, and we're going to see disasters, and we may see disasters that occur on different scales, on different uh, in different frequencies. So we need to keep that in mind. Um, modularity. So. Uh, discourages overconnectedness. Certainly we want some level of connectedness to be able to respond to a disaster, but we want modularity um, so that if we have one area that is disrupted, that other area then can then go support um, that area that might be disrupted. So uh, having some ability to, to kind of look at things in terms of modularity. Uh, slow variables is another one. So the awareness of, of clues leading to a disturbance. Uh, how are we kind of getting some, and, and with some disasters, we're far better at this than others. Uh, how are we getting some clues that there might be a disturbance coming? Um, and that will help us to better prepare. Uh, and, and But then also preparedness can lead to resilience. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Tight feedbacks, okay? So if we have some awareness um, that, that we may have a disaster impending or in process or a disaster that has occurred, um, how do we, uh, what, are the, what are the feedbacks? How do we, um, how do we kind of act on, on what we've learned? How do we detect that <coughs> something has taken place um, that we need to respond to in a certain way? Um, sometimes disasters are rather obvious, natural disasters are rather obvious, but how do we know how we should be responding to those best? And thinking about this in terms of, again, like your social setting, your emotional setting, um, your, your physical structure, physical needs that are need, met for the community, how do we know um, 
what those needs are and uh, when those needs uh, are, have emerged and, and how do we act on those. Uh, so some other ones, social capital, right? So that's just trust, uh, well-developed social networks. And that could be, you know, from communities that are kind of on the fringe of the disaster. Uh, how do we work well with those uh, communities uh, so that we can all kind of bounce back better? And uh, the communities that are most hurt uh, are able to uh, kind of leverage that social capital. Uh, innovation. Again, I mean, really thinking about how do we do things differently? And certainly <clears throat> countries across the world uh, are, are adopting different strategies for managing some disasters. And can those be employed? Can we rethink the way that we do life or do cities or build build cities? Um, and, and that comes to, to down to innovation, all right? Um, I talked a little bit about redundancy and this is tied in with diversity. So <clears throat> thinking about how do we build redundancy into our processes, into our cities? Um, this might be evacuation routes, multiple evacuation routes. Um, this could be multiple uh, resources for counseling post post uh, resilience or post uh, disaster. Um, uh, you know, this could be um, various different uh, physical or or resources or or. Um, uh, programs that might be needed in the wake of a disaster so that you're not relying on simply one um, one resource or uh, road or um, program. Um, if those programs aren't available, those roads aren't available, those, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> rescue services aren't available, how do we uh, kind of pull from other resources and have redundancy in our system? And then thinking about, you know, what values do, does nature bring to uh, a system? And, um, and that would be the ecosystem services. And how do we leverage some of those uh, to be able to uh, bounce back better? And I think that ties somewhat into innovation, thinking about how do we take advantage of what nature might be offering us in terms of um, flood management, draining an area that could be that could be a situation wildfires um, thinking about you know how to how to wildfires regenerate and um, and really kind of considering uh, what does nature do best and how can we adopt that so thinking about you know community disaster resilience these are just kind of a just info, info, infographic here where we look at the different kind of pieces that might be valuable so being able to be organized in the face of a disaster obviously craziness and and crazy it's a crazy time during a natural disaster how does that community self organize quickly um, how do they have effective communications? And obviously, you know, with the, you know, with cell phones and watches and email and internet, um, social media, all of these communication strategies have, have, have really improved over the last decade. Understanding risks and uncertainty. Where are you most prone? Where are the risks? Are certainly some places are are more at risk than others, and so uh, even in a, in a particular town, some some areas of a town might be more at risk than others. How do we kind of address those those risks? Uh, using and then also applying the local knowledge and resources. What do we know about our community that will make us that could make us stronger that we can leverage? Um, uh, and, and apply to make us as strong a community as possible um, in order to be able to, again, bounce back. It's about bouncing back, recovering from a disaster, leveraging social connectedness, making sure that people um, are, are, are having their need, needs met <clears throat> in a community setting, um, uh, stepping up and, and helping one another uh, versus a community that really isn't connected. Um, and you guys can probably imagine what that might look like. Empowerment. This is important. Um, you know, day to day, you know, when we're not facing disasters, we may not um, all have, we, we certainly don't all have the same roles. But in the face of a disaster, how do we um, empower people that might not typically be uh, taking on certain roles and allow them to take on those roles and encourage them to take on those roles so that the whole community can bounce back quicker. 
Um, so that's imp important. Preparation and engagement, uh, you know, it's just forward thinking, right? You know, how do we have a plan that we can bounce back? Collaborating between stakeholders, and I would also add, again, when I referred to this earlier, thinking about how do we leverage those resources that might be on the fringe of the disaster um, and, uh, and, and, and taking advantage of those. <clears throat> and then developing some flexibility. Um, you know, are there ways that we can, uh, you know, uh, work around current processes, and that might be administrative processes, it might be um, structural or design processes uh, to be able to uh, bounce back during that that disaster period, that that post disaster period. Okay, um, so we'll kind of keep going here, but I want to talk a little bit, and I think I've alluded to this in class already um, about just a, a kind of a a strategy for um, for uh, for resilience or a model for understanding resilience and how. Uh, resilient systems bounce back. And this model kind of came from um, uh, uh, the, the ecology world and really looking at how do ecosystems bounce back. Um, but the principles have been applied to um, what we're kind of talking about today in a social setting. And, um, and so what we kind of see is this is called the ball and cup heuristic. Again, I do think I talked a little bit about this in... Um, in, in our class at some point. So generally, this is kind of the, the, the cup, the idea that this is the cup. And, and every system gravitates towards a stable state. And here's the ball that sits at the bottom of the cup, right? Um, that would be stable state for this uh, situation. And so, <clears throat> um, you know, every community has a stable state, you know, and, and on a normal Monday morning, this is stable state, right? Nothing crazy going on, um, no major disasters. Um, maybe no no accidents on the highway, right? Uh, everyone's headed off to work and everything's everyone's headed off to school and and this is stable, right? Um, this is what we're used to. But disasters pop up and they shift normalcy, right? And the healthiest communities um, are able to, and healthiest people, we'll talk, think about this in a social setting as well, are able to bounce back to that normal state quickly. Um, and, and some communities, it takes a lot longer to bounce back. Um, some ecosystems, it takes a lot longer for an ecosystem to bounce back because they're just simply not as resilient. Um, but the ability to build in this resilience um, and, and, and uh, be a forward-thinking community that is proactive about how do we become a resilient community can build the walls of this up. A little bit higher so that um, and steeper I'll add as well uh, so that this ball then returns to that stable state even quicker okay um, if you have a community that is not a very resilient community or a, a family that uh, isn't a very resilient com uh, family and um, and that I don't imply any fault on, on anyone, um, but that's just kind of the nature of, of, of discussing resilience is <clears throat> there's a spectrum there and some are, are some communities or people are more resilient than others um, uh, because of resources or because of a variety of reasons. Um, but if they aren't able to uh, bounce back or this bounce back takes longer, let's imagine that it takes longer, but eventually they get back here. That's one alternative. The other alternative is they see um, either the, the disturbance was so significant it pushes them into a new stable state, okay? Or um, they see multiple, multiple um, disturbances. Let's say they make it up here and then um, they get another disturbance, right? And maybe it's an earthquake and then a wildfire, right? Uh, Ultimately, this could push them into a new stable state, which may look very, very different, right? Um, maybe the town, you know, it, it doesn't, people don't return to the town because it, it's never is what it was, right? Um, or, um, you know, uh, or it's, it's too disaster prone. Um, so um, 
it can it can look very very different whatever that community might look like and i think probably new orleans there's, there's uh, has seen some of this um in terms of um the communities that have chosen to live there after um after katrina and that disaster uh you know does that community look different than it did previously and we could look at a number of different disasters and say all right you know how does this change the community did it change what's normal for the community uh and again we're talking about a model does this apply in every situation circumstance not necessarily so i'm going to jump back over here and kind of just walk through again there's that stable system uh, we can deal with shocks and disturbance to a point um, and, and then remain keep that identity <clears throat> an unstable system would then move beyond that threshold a small disturbance can push the system over its threshold okay um, and it hasn't built up uh, those higher walls okay um, just thinking about you know how do they build higher walls so that that system would return and that's a resilient community um, and then uh, you know environments and social systems social factors can impact the system's resilience and that's kind of what I'm getting at it as well how deep is that cup um, how do we uh, uh, best prepare uh, for those disturbances so that uh, we can bounce back and create a bigger cup or higher walls. Um, and so also kind of in this vein, you know, how much shock can a system absorb before it transforms into something different is a good question. And some, some systems, and again, when I refer to systems, we could be talking about individuals, we could be talking about families, we could be talking about um, uh, communities, towns, cities, uh, and, and even countries. Um, how much uh, can we absorb before we transform into something different? And what does this look like for disaster-prone communities? Um, and so, you know, thinking about can a community that might be an earthquake prone area also withstand a forest fire, right? Um, and, and multiple disasters being prepared for multiple disasters or multiple disasters over a very short period of time. Um, so uh, just wanted to kind of touch on, this is kind of an interesting graph and I wanna kind of touch on this, um, adaptive behavior, robust behavior, ductile behavior, and then a collapsing system. So when a system kind of has a shock uh, we see right here kind of the, the arrow. Um, <clears throat> it's, its performance is not optimum, right? It's, it's gonna, it's every, every system is gonna, gonna uh, devolve, you know, when it sees a shock. And, and again, use the analogy of a social system um, as well, your personal life. When there's a disturbance in your personal life and your car breaks down, right? Uh, we are not functioning at optimum performance when that kind of disturbance might pop up in our life. But how do we bounce back, okay? And so there's four essential patterns. One, we absorb the shock without collapsing. Two, we recover from the shock to gain structure and function, okay? So maybe we get our car back, we get it into the shop. Uh, we adapt through self-organizing and learning. All right, um, maybe I need to get oil changes more frequently so my car doesn't break down, I need to get my tires fixed, whatever. Um, so we learn and, and, and we don't, don't take on those, those risks again. Um, and then we eventually transform into a different system by altering, and this is different in a good way. We build these walls up um, and, and, and we transform into a stronger, more resilient system, okay? Um, and again, you can see the spectrum here uh, from an adaptive behavior choice where we kind of learn from our experiences down to collapsing behavior where it's like, okay, I, I, I give up, I'm done. And my car broke down and I, I'm, I'm just, I'm checking out of life, right? I'm going to, I'm going to just stay at home and, and not do anything. That might be the extreme in that example, but obviously, um, you know, you know, there is this spectrum of, of how, uh, you know, a, a system, uh, and again, community, what have you, uh, may respond to a disturbance, okay? Um, so also kind of want to just, you know, the slides in here, I do want you to think through how do you assess resilience? How do we um, measure how resilient we are? And, and how, as a community, how should communities assess how resilient they are prior to disasters? So think about that. Um, the last 
couple slides I want to touch on, and I'm kind of moving through this quickly. I want you guys to spend some more time on this and reading through some of the materials I'm going to share as well. But how do people deal and cope with a disaster? So building resili resilient communities capable of providing resources to people in need. And what I'm going to highlight here is where are the physical needs, the social needs, and the emotional needs? Um, and, and I alluded to this uh, also last week, but... Um, there's certainly an emotional toll that is taken on people that experience a disaster and that can't be ignored. Um, uh, you know, even the best laid plans are, are difficult to follow in the face of total collapse, maybe um, for, for some loss of, of, of friends or, or loved ones or, or, um, or, 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 or even, you know, livelihoods or, or homes. Um, so this emotional piece, um, sure, physical needs absolutely need met. met. Um, the social needs absolutely need met. And the emotional needs of a community or of individuals absolutely need to be met in the face of disasters. So that needs to be a part of a resilience plan. How do you address that? Because um, disasters are, are certainly unpredictable predictable, and few of us are, are truly prepared for what that might be. It might be a once in a lifetime sort of experience. Um, and so that can be a severe trauma. Um, we could be dealing with deadly situations, destroyed property, loss of life, like I was just explaining. And so um, managing that, thinking about how do we take care of people in the midst of this? Um, again, you know, <clears throat> there's resilience planning in, in, in all, all of those different, all three of these different uh, circles, right? Concentric circles. So, um, you know, thinking about how are we resilient in the emotion, emotional needs of our, of our system or of our community or family. How do we address the physical needs um, of our community or family? And then how do we address the social needs of our community or family. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, obviously this kind of, 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 of challenge can lead to anxiety, despair, and shock. And what we often see um, is, is post-traumatic stress disorders after PTSD, after um, uh, natural disasters. And, and certainly, you know, we want to be able to provide the best resources we possibly can for um, our community would want to provide the best resources they could for for individuals that have been have, have, have seen probably the worst um, and, and lost a lot in the face of disasters. So um, something that we have, want to keep in mind and uh, keeping in mind building resilience in the context of these three elements. So um, short lecture, but I did want to kind of just talk through it with you. Uh, again, there's some material online that I, I'm going to post on Canvas as well uh, to go along with this in the module. Uh, make sure you take a look at it. And um, uh, there's um, uh, the Rockefeller Institute, I think, is doing some fantastic work on how do we build resilient cities. And so I'll share some of that as well. Um, all right. Have a great week. And uh, we'll, uh, we will stop it there.